and it's called inductive and deductive reasoning. So in geometry, there's what they there's two different types of reasonings. One's called inductive, and the other one's called deductive. So let's see what they're what they're all about. Um, so this just tells you what you're going to learn. Uh, we're going to understand and use inductive reasoning to solve problems, and we're going to understand and use deductive reasoning to also solve problems. So first, we start us off with the natural numbers. So the natural numbers are also known as the counting numbers. So it's the same. It's the same thing. You can. Some people call them the natural. Some people call them the counting. And they always start at one. And then it's just the whole numbers starting from one, two, three, four. Dot dot dot. The dot dot dot. That's called an ellipses. And that just means that it continues indefinitely. It just continues going on and on. The same pattern that you're seeing continues forever. All right, so that's what the ellipses means. It just means it's a continuation indefinitely, and it's the same pattern that you see. So the next number would be 9, and then 10, and then 11, and so on and so on. All right, divisibility. So if A divided by B has a remainder of 0, then we say that a is divisible by b because there's no remainder so for example 36 divided by 4 does anybody know what that is nine that's nine and the remainder is zero right there's no remainder so that means that um four is divisible um, I'm sorry, 36 is divisible by 4 because the remainder is 0. All right, so that's what um, that means. The counting numbers that are divisible by 2 are the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8. So if you go back to here, all the even numbers will be divisible by 2 because there's if you divide by 2, the remainder is going to be 0 for each of those. That's the definition. All right, the counting numbers that are not divisible by two are the odd numbers. All right, so evens are divisible by two, odd, odd numbers are not divisible by two. Okay, inductive reasoning. So let's see what inductive reasoning is. It says the process of reasoning to a general conclusion through observations and and of specific cases. So this is called induction. Um, so let me give you an example. Let's say this was does anybody know what the next number in the sequence would be? Fifteen. Very good. How did you get fifteen? Every four numbers. You're adding four to the previous number, right? Yeah. So you just keep adding four. That's that's the pattern, right? So the next number would be nineteen. Nineteen. So what we just used was inductive reasoning. That was the type of reasoning we used to conclude that the next number was going to be fifteen, and the number after that was going to be nineteen. So that was called that's an example of what inductive reasoning is. It's the general, it's um, the process of reasoning to a general conclusion through observation and of specific cases. All right, so often used by mathematicians and scientists to predict answers to complicated problems. All right, so yeah, it's basically you're just observing patterns and then based on the pattern, you're able to figure out what the next um, number and the sequences or the, the the you can predict the answer to a problem based on that induction inductive reasoning all right then it says scientific method inductive reasoning is a part of the scientific method when we make a prediction based on specific observations it is called a hypothesis or a conjecture so yeah so maybe you make some observations and then you come up with a conjecture maybe um, I don't know, maybe it rains 
every one at least once every December. And maybe you follow that for like five or six years. And every December, you notice that it rains at least once. So your conjecture or your hypothesis might be it will rain at least once every December. December. Um, so that could be a hypothesis. Um, and it's just based on your observations. And so you just make a prediction. Uh, okay, so let's move on. So here's another example. It says, what reasoning process has led to the conclusion that no two people have the same fingerprints or DNA? This conclusion has resulted in the use of fingerprints and DNA in courts of law as evidence to convict persons of crime. So the answer is they're asking what reasoning process has led to the conclusion that no two people. So you're gonna you're supposed to say the inductive reasoning. So the answer is inductive reasoning because it's been through experience that no, like there's never been two people that have the same fingerprints or the same DNA. So we can make the prediction that no two people have it based on this reasoning because we've never seen it before. So therefore we, we can make that conclusion. All right. So that's just an example of inductive reasoning. All right, for this example, they say pick a number, any number. So pick any number. So everybody just pick a number, but don't say it out loud. Just pick it in your mind. Maybe write it down on a piece of paper. I'm gonna pick a number two. I'm gonna pick I'll pick seven. <clears throat> multiply the number by four. So now we're going to multiply that number by four. And then we're going to add two to that product. So we're going to add two to the product. Then we're going to divide the sum by two. So divide the sum by two. And then and we're going to subtract one from the quotient. So subtract one from the quotient. So repeat this procedure for several different numbers and then make a conjecture about the relationship between the original number and the final number. All right, so let's work this out. Seven times four, anybody know what that is? 20. 28. 28. 28 plus two? 30. 30. So it's gonna be 30 divided by two minus one is? 15, oh, 14. 14. Uh, yeah. 15, one is 14. Very good. 14. Did anybody use a different number? Um, did anybody pick a different number to start off with? No. I use seven. Seven is my favorite number. So I was over here laughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's just use it. I'm just going to use a different number. So let's try 100. So you're supposed to multiply by four, add two. Divide by two, subtract one. So, what is this going to be? Four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred plus two. Four hundred two. Four hundred two divided by two. Two. Two hundred one. Yeah, and then two hundred one minus one. Two hundred. Wait, did I do this right? Hold on. Four, 400, 402, 201. So the final answer is 200, right? Right. Okay. So look at the original number and then look at the final number. Oh. And then, it's and then doubled. It's double. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be double. So that could be our conjecture, right? Our conjecture would be whatever number you start with if you double it that's going to be your final answer. answer so yeah so that would be our conjecture let me write the conjecture down <clears throat> um original number times two equals final number so that would be a conjecture you take the original number and you just multiply by two and that's your final number.
So if we would have started with, let's say we would have started with 13, what would the final answer be? Double at 20, 20, uh, 26. Yeah, 26. Let's just verify that just to be just to be sure. So let's start once again. Let's just change this to a 13. So change that to a 13. Let's see if it works. 13 times 4 is. Turns out to be 52, right? 52 plus 2 is 54. And then you have to divide 54 by 2. That's 27. And then 27 take away 1. 26. 26. Did it work? 13 plus 13 is 26. Yep, it did work. So that our conjecture seems to be correct. All right, so let's move on. All right, then they 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 come up with the or they say counterexample in testing a conjecture. If a special case is found that satisfies the conditions of the conjecture but produces a different result, that case is called a counterexample. So if you can find an example that doesn't fit the conjecture, then that means that you found a counterexample. Only one exception is necessary to prove a conjecture false. So you only have to find one example where it doesn't work for the conjecture to be false. If a counterexample cannot be found, then the conjecture is neither proven nor disproven. So, um, so let's see if we can find it. Does anyone think they can find a counterexample to this conjecture of ours? In other words, is there a number that you can think of such that when you double it, it doesn't give you um, twice the number? Thirteen. Uh, thirteen. Well, thirteen, we get twenty-six, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. How about fourteen? Uh, fourteen, I'm pretty sure it's going to work. Let's just try fourteen times four plus two divided by two minus one. So the conjecture is that it should be 14 times two, 28, right? It should be 28. Let's see if it's true. 14 times four is 56. 56 plus two is 58. By two is 29. 29 minus 1 is 28. So it did work because if you double, you multiply that by 2, you get 28. Yeah. So I don't think we're going to be able to find a counterexample. I think it's going to work for all the numbers. And let's see what they say next. A second type of reasoning process is called deductive reasoning or deduction. Deductive reasoning is a process of reasoning to a specific conclusion from a general statement. So this is different from inductive. Inductive, you're just looking at observations and patterns. But for deduction, you're actually going to um, come up with the proof, a real proof, which you'll see right now. So they say prove using deductive reasoning that the procedure in example five will always result in twice the original number selected. So basically, they want us to prove using deductive reasoning that the conjecture is true, that this conjecture will always be true. Yeah. So this is how we can do that. We're gonna go with, you know how you're supposed to pick your original number? You pick a variable. So let's pick, they want us to use N. So you pick N to be your original number. And then they say, multiply that by four, right? They say, multiply by four. Add two, divide by two, subtract one. So multiply by four. Um, was it add two? I think was next. Add two divided by two. Add minus two. two. Yeah, add two, 
divided by two minus one. Minus one. All right, so let's work this out. This is going to be four n, right? Four n times four is four n plus two over two minus one. Two. All right, so this is what we have so far. What you can do, notice that this has a common factor. Four and two have a common factor of two. So what you can do is you can you can factor out a two. If you factor out a two from four, that's going to leave that at two n. And if you factor out a two from the two, that's going to leave you with the, a plus one. one. So what I did is I took out the two from from the numerator because they both have a common factor of two, so you're allowed to factor it out. <clears throat> and then you can always kind of check if you distribute, you would get four n plus two. All right, and now see these two, you can cancel them out. You can cross cancel them because you're dividing. So those disappear. And now you have two n plus one minus one. The ones are gonna disappear because they're gonna cancel each other out. And you're left with two n. So that's the proof. You started with n, and the answer was twice, two times n. So that shows you that. This is an example of using deductive reasoning because you actually proved a statement to be true. Um, the original number is n and the final number is 2n. So this is, uh, this is how you would prove it formally. All right, that is the end of the section. Yeah, that was it. Um, all right, let me um, let me show you um, the homework, what the homework would look like. So let me bring that up real quick. So this is what I would send you. If you don't have your book yet, I can send you this. It's a picture of the first page, 1.1. Um, so remember, you're supposed to do every other odd, right? So you do one, skip three go to five, skip seven, go to nine. And let me bring up the next page. And mister, can you do that again? Yeah, yeah, let me bring that up again. Okay, so, so you would start, you would start with problem number one. You Since you're doing every other odd, every, other odd you would do that one skip do that one skip oh i see how you did it okay and then you would go to number nine you would do that one skip and then you would do that one skip all right so that's how you would do it so let's look at number 13. number 13 says draw the next figure in the pattern so looks like there is a triangle pentagon anybody have any idea what the next shape would have to look like or how many sides it should have uh six sides yeah very good yep you got it because this one has three sides this one has four sides. This one has five sides. That means the next one has to be six sides. Mm -hmm. So you would just draw a hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then just put a little circle in the middle because they all have circles in the middle. So that's all you would have to do. That would be an example of inductive reasoning, by the way, because you're looking at observations. All right. so. Let me see what else I can show you here. Let's get the next page going. Okay, so after 15, you're supposed to do 17. So then you're supposed to do 17, skip 19, do 21, skip 23, do 25, skip that one. So, um, why don't I, I'm gonna send you guys these pictures 
And then I'm going to put you guys in a breakout room. Let's see, what time does class end? Does anybody know what time class ends? Uh, 